all right as you guys can see whole new place um no it's not a new house or anything it's just yeah now i'm in college and i don't even know if you guys knew or anything um but <laughs> yeah the uploads i i know definitely not as frequent man honestly i'm not gonna lie it felt kind of good not even really recording or anything uh, for a little bit because yeah really i would say yeah six months ago or so uh before really started yeah kind of getting messed up it's like yeah i was just trying to be consistent i was like trying to record every day but yeah not really recording yeah it feels kind of good you know just taking that break um i'm gonna still try and provide you know videos for you guys but yeah man um yeah so we got the magecraft yeah i know um i was trying to get this out way sooner but yeah like literally right after the previous one i did but hey man here we are you know hopefully this should come out august 17 that actually yeah that, that day yeah i think it's been two weeks since the last one but yeah as you guys could see i really did not have the time to really do much i had to yeah move in and all that it, it was a lot but other than that though we got a good 15 minute video here well no he got the outro so probably like 13 minutes or so but other than that though hope you guys still will enjoy these make sure you like subscribe and hey man let's get, get this reaction started In our previous lesson, we went All over right. a much more natural aspect of our world, focusing on phantasmal species yeah. that dominated in the Age of Gods. Oh, spe oh yeah, in the contrast, dragon, yes. Today, we will be looking toward the future for innovations in yeah, Magecraft. Yeah, that was... Specifically, dang. we will be talking about spirit I hope I could've... which have vastly expanded the very yeah. concept of what Magecraft can be. I know it took a while for this one Just to get like out, but... Just like any other human, I'm mages here. too are subject to stereotypes. A popular one is that mages are terrible with technology. While they may excel with building and utilizing mystic codes, it is true that traditional mages struggle with more contemporary technology. That said, there is no rule stating that mages cannot embrace new ideas. In fact, one could argue such an open mind is absolutely essential for the modern mage. After all, mystery is in decline and has been ever since the gods departed our world in response to our reliance on science. Thus, to assume all mages are quaint and stubborn like that would be the pinnacle of ignorance. Groups such as the Atlas Institute and Caldea Security Organization oh, prove that no. magecraft yeah, goes hand in hand with up. technological prowess. Oh, no. On the forefront of this innovation is Spiritron technology, which is essentially a fresh perspective on a classic element, the soul. Living beings are comprised of three main aspects, the body, mind, and soul. Of these, the soul is arguably the most important aspect for being a record of the body and even containing a mage's magic circuits. In that regard, the body is merely a material terminal for the soul. Even with the loss of the body, so long as a person's soul remains, their very being can be restored through the records of their soul, assuming right. another body is procured. After all, for as eternal as the soul can be, it cannot remain in the material world without a body to contain it. Without such a vessel, souls inevitably return to the root whence they came. When a soul is still present in our world, it can be physically detected as a set of quantum particles called spiritrons. And there we go. Mages willing to embrace scientific it. knowledge and technology have been able to use spiritrons in ways that greatly expand human potential. Most commonly, spiritrons can be projected into interfaces such as computers, and thanks to Caldea's ray shift system, into other time periods, effectively allowing humans to travel back in time. 
These projections, called pseudo-spiritrons, can be thought of as packets of data, information stored about a person's consciousness and genetics. This is useful for projecting humans into avatars in a virtual environment, but spiritrons are also ideal for storing all manner of data, allowing for extremely efficient spiritron computers. Using Spiritrons in this way, it's possible to create vast information networks that are years ahead of civilian tech. In some worlds, this innovation is absolutely essential. In the various timelines we refer to as Extra Worlds, Earth suffered a great collapse in the 1970s, resulting in the end of traditional magecraft, as the mana needed to perform it dried up. The mages of old became obsolete, and in their place, more technologically savvy mages took over, utilizing a process called Spiritron hacking to perform their craft in an entirely digital space. The future of these worlds falls not onto the prosperity of the Earth, but rather the existence of the Moon Cell, a massive supercomputer on the Moon that's been around for over 100 million years. While we can only speculate its origin, its central database, the Moon Cell Automaton, has been recording the universe's history in a manner similar to the roots Akashic records. Beyond storing records, the Automaton also contains a vast artificial environment known as the Serial Phantasm, or Seraph for short. Hoping to take shelter in this virtual space, Spiritron hackers mm -hmm. would, naturally, hack into Seraph, projecting into it their own souls converted into pseudo-Spiritrons. Many of these hackers continue their magecraft, not through channeling the Earth's mana, but by executing computer programs. As such, the mages of the Moon Cell are more aptly called wizards, if only to distinguish them apart from the mages of old. Wizard spells, known as code casts, convert traditional incantations into pre-compiled code, only requiring the wizard's own mana for activation. Such codes can be stored externally through consumable objects, but they are most effective when installed directly into a wizard's virtual avatar, though this has the chance of altering their nature, so it comes at a risk. The very first Ooh, Spiritron hacker was a man named Twice H. Gotta Peaceman. have some risk with some After things. being orphaned during the Earth's Great Collapse, he survived through warfare to become a scientist. While not a traditional magus, he started Spiritron hacking as part of his research to cure a disease known as Amnesia Syndrome. While his body was destroyed in a bioterrorist attack, his Spiritron data was used by the Moon Cell as an NPC in the Moon Cell Grail Wars. Other significant Spiritron hackers include Shinji Mato. Shinji. As the son of an influential mage family, Shinji would have fared poorly as a traditional mage. But I wish he wizard, did continue he to fail for <laughs> his penchant for online gaming helped like him strive him, in virtual environments. Thanks to new technology, an otherwise inept mage hey. can be seen as formidable by brilliant mages like Rin Tosaka. Another wizard nah, who didn't Shin exactly start right. as a it's typical just... mage is Kiara Seshoin, hey, the daughter of the Shingon Tachikawa Eiten School of Buddhism. Uh, yeah. Despite being ill and bedridden for her first 14 years of life, she was able to make a name for herself by learning Spiritron hacking from her like-minded worshippers. Fate gotta have some type of fan service This allowed her to somewhere. form a strong presence on the internet, reforming the Tachikawa Eiten School into a cult centered around worshipping her. One sign of a skilled Spiritron hacker comes from the ability to change one's avatar. While the Moon Cell assigns combatants their clothing, placing them into one of several roles at school, certain mages are quick to hack those designs in lieu of their own. Runru, otherwise known as Lil Ronnie, was a rather twisted competitor with an eating disorder. In contrast to her thin body, she wears the costume of a popular burger joint's mascot. It goes without saying, <laughs> popular, clown attire yeah. is anything but standard. The mage Julius B. Harvey entered the Moon Cell Grail War under unique circumstances. Hey, new characters. Through hacking, he first entered the war by using the personal okay, data like of that. Soichiro Kuzuki, a school on? teacher. Hacking allowed him to oh. find the data of another NPC and use that data got as that a drip false identity. Him. Much like Shinji, the mage Jineko Karigiri developed hey, a talent Lord for technology Karna. by mastering video games. As an accidental captive oh, of it... BB Sakura oh, Labyrinth, yeah. she used her expertise in Spiritron hacking to create a virus used to weaken BB so, Sentinel Meltralis. Here she goes. However, playing hacking a role. needn't be used for such extreme purposes. Yet again, Burger, or I'm seeing a her Middle yet Eastern again. spellcaster, was able to use his Spiritron hacking to encrypt data sent over the internet to securely message Lord El Malloy II. 
The Atlas Institute found use in spiritrons both in and out of extra worlds. The alchemist Sion Eltnam Atlassia fights with a nanofilament wire called etherlight. While it can be swung like a whip, Sion's etherlight is primarily meant for tapping into her enemy's nervous system, letting her read their thoughts and memories. Given that such things are recorded into a person's soul, the etherlight is considered a form of spiritron hacking. Similarly, as the soul contains magic circuits, the creation of homunculi with circuits can also be thought of as manipulating spiritrons. Perhaps the best example is Rani VIII, a special homunculi made by Atlas's Selim Eltnam Re Atlassia. Not only does Rani have magic circuits, but at her core is a spiritron computer named Hermes, a smaller form of Atlas's supercomputer Tri-Hermes. Despite hacking the moon cell to exist within Seraph as a virtual entity, her self-destruct protocol, Mode Osiris, has the potential to corrupt the moon cell by overloading her magic circuits in case her mission fails. Naturally, the Caldea security organization wouldn't have been established without the help of technology from Atlas. When its first director, Marisbury Animosphere, claimed victory in the Holy Grail of Fuyuki in the year 2004, he wished upon the Grail for the wealth needed to fully realize Caldea, a facility that could monitor the continued well-being of humanity. At its core is Caldeus, the simulated global environment model. It uses part of what we consider to be the planet's soul, Alaya, to replicate the Earth as a miniature that can be observed in both the past, present, and future. Its shape is formed of high-density spiritrons that can only be observed by a lens known as Sheba. Should a human actually touch Caldeus directly, they will be decomposed on a molecular level Dang. akin to being swallowed by a small sun. Aside from its hey, comprehensive fate servant summoning system, Caldea's greatest asset is its ray-shifting technology. It surpasses the brilliance of even Spiritron hacking in that, rather than projecting one's soul into a virtual space, it allows a person to project their soul onto another point in time. The result is a genuine, physical form of time travel that Caldea uses primarily in the correction of historical anomalies, or singularities. Normally, time travel would fall under the domain of true magic. But Caldea found a way to achieve something practically similar by taking a person's soul, converting it into pseudo spiritrons, and projecting those onto Caldeus at various time periods. Ray shift subjects even bypass the counterforce, being perceived as phantasmal beings. Even so, ray shifting is incredibly dangerous and requires the soul be able to verify its existence through quantum yeah, of course, observation. Yeah, definitely dangerous. Certain ray shift candidates are more compatible with this Making process your soul than others. Go from here to and there? to ensure no. this process even further, Caldea uses machines called Klein coffins, which can shut down in an emergency, preserving a master's vitals through cryogenic freezing. Verifying a person's existence across time, as well as monitoring I'm their vitality program. and the current state of singularities, demands tremendous computation. To handle this, Caldea has its own supercomputer, Trismegistus, built by Atlas using the same tech as their computer, Trihermes. As such, Trismegistus is a Spiritron computer that is essential to maintaining a master's existence remains tied to both the past and present. Lastly, I want to mention that heroic spirits, like the ones summoned by Caldea, are effectively spiritual beings, and as such, their shape and appearance are dictated by their soul. While a servant can certainly wear clothing from the era to which they're summoned, their basic appearance can always be restored from the blueprint imprinted on their soul. As such, another way for servants to change appearance is to alter their own saint graphs, engraving new outfits onto their souls. Such costume changes are classified as spiritron dresses, and often accompany a servant as they attempt to redefine or explore certain aspects of their legend or personality. In summation, spiritrons are a discovery that has helped bridge the traditional practices of magecraft with modern science. Yeah. By acknowledging these quantum particles of the soul, mages can alter or project themselves into various times and places. For many, this means learning to access the Moon Cell as a Spiritron hacker, a wizard that performs through Seraph's virtual reality. Compared to traditional magecraft, Spiritron hackers don't necessarily require the greatest magic circuits, which is a tremendous advantage should the Earth's mana deplete. In some cases, the very future of humanity depends on Spiritron technology. Caldea, for instance, uses spiritrons to essentially perform time travel, a phenomenon needed to resolve singularities that risk sending the human order into chaos. 
With a more thorough understanding of the soul, I feel it is now possible to talk about the most famous aspect of Magecraft, okay. the ability to summon Earth's epic heroes as heroic spirits. Oh. Thus, for our next lesson, I will finally discuss the true nature of servants, not exclusively okay. as familiars, but as the protectors of humanity. The true nature of servants. So yeah, basically how they're summoned and all. Okay, yeah, I even think that'd be a thing. You know, I thought they kind of, you know, explained it kind of well enough. You know, um, well, no, he can go deeper into like, you know, how you can guarantee to get a certain servant. Obviously, certain people like Shido and Kiritsugu got Saber because, you know, <laughs> main character and all. But yeah, like, who knows? Like, someone else really could have gotten Saber because. Yeah, cause I know you gotta have like a catalyst to at least increase the chance, and it may be a hundred percent chance, you know, if you just have that, you know, catalyst or item that's just really related to them, uh, maybe a hundred. But yeah, he could go deeper into that for me. Yeah, cause that's pretty much all I know is like, yeah, you just get an extra chance if you have like a certain relic or something um, from them. To basically, yeah, help you summon them, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it. And well, actually, also, yeah, he probably might go over how strong, well, like how strong they could be, because it it really does depend on the master's mana. Also, like, yeah, to just keep them in that physical form and all, and really supply them with the mana they need. But, no, nah, I don't even think it had to be, I don't know how you could go even deeper than that, uh, where that, um, yeah, because that's, that's just pretty much, I can tell, like, if they don't got mana, they can't do much, and if they do have a whole bunch, I mean, yeah, literally do what you want, servant. But, yeah, yeah, definitely smart, yeah, learning how to use that technology and all. I mean, hey, that's definitely something you want to know, basically. Like mages, I know they got all this and all of that. You know, you can use gym magecraft and all this other magecraft. But that technology, I mean, that's pretty much where it's at, especially the science. Um, you know, you could really get into like your body's limits and all, really figure out maybe like when someone's born you know if they have the chance or uh, compatibility to use more than one magecraft or something if that's yeah even the thing yeah you could do that um or when they're born you could see if your baby or something just really yeah just has that uh potential in general to either be strong they may be weak um who knows or hit a hidden talent so yeah, just that science and technology, that'll definitely help that out. But yeah, it should be about it. Yes, yeah, spirit charms. And then learning about the servant. Yeah, I'm like, I've seen a saber. I'm like, okay, what, what, what we about to get into here? But yeah, um, oh yeah, and I didn't even say this in the beginning, um, but yeah this pretty much probably will be it for the fate for a little while until i can find something else to look at because i know there's definitely anime i can still look at you know i just know i wanted to go over the main ones first so obviously fate stay night you know i wanted to go yeah even willing to go way back i forgot when it was like 2003 or something i yeah i forgot the date but it was old and yeah, willing to go back there just to see the story. And then you got Unlimited Blade Works. You know, I did Prisma Ia, El Malloy that I just finished. So yeah, if you guys want to look at that, yeah, all of it's there. Um. Oh yeah, Apocalypse. Yeah, I was like, there's something else. I might look at Encore, I think. Yeah, Last Encore. Yeah, because at this point, I mean, I don't mind, you know, what anime I look at. Um. As long as it's fate, you know, as long as it's fate, as long as there's something of fate that I can look at, you know, I just do it. Um, but for now, it may be Magecraft. 
because it would just be easier for me yeah, to simply record, edit a little bit, and then you know upload compared to having to do the double episodes or something. Um, yeah, on top of the Naruto as well. Yeah, because I'm really just trying to see mostly what I need to do first. Get all my work done and, hey man, here we go, you know. Make some more um, videos and just keep this thing going. But, yeah, that should be it. Uh, so like I, And it won't be just Magecraft. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and do, like, Don't Sleep On or uh, maybe get back to lore videos. But... Yeah, this is going to be the perfect chance for me to just do a whole bunch. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy this. Make sure you like, subscribe again. And I will see you guys in the next one.